Hi friends, this is Pastor Mike from Suncrest United Methodist Church visiting with you today. So in the recent Dobbs decision, the Supreme Court of the United States overturned Roe versus Wade. You know that, big news, right? Well, in the media, you're going to hear representations from a very few uh, religious groups on the issue of abortion. You're going to hear um, from the Roman Catholic uh, perspective. Uh, they have a strong, well-documented uh, set of beliefs and principles around the issue of abortion. You're probably going to hear about some internal conflict and wrestling, especially with elected Roman Catholic officials. You're going to hear probably uh, the perspective of some in the Jewish community, because some of the folks in the Jewish community are going to say that the overturning of Roe versus Wade is an infringement upon their religious duties at times. You're going to hear interviews that will give the perspectives of what the media calls the evangelical church, um, which is really a number of independent and denominational church bodies that have been closely associated um, with attempts to overturn Roe versus Wade. So they're going to get a lot of press time. What about the United Methodist Church of which Suncrest belongs to? Does the United Methodist Church have statements about abortion or the recent Supreme Court decision? Yes, the United Methodist Church do, does have statements and has recently, in the recent days, issued statements on this decision and on, on abortion. You're gonna see a QR code and a, a link, a bit.ly link, which is going to take you to a document containing the United Methodist Church's official statement on abortion from the church's social principles. And in that document, you're also going to see a letter from Bishop Tom Bickerton, West Virginia native and a friend of mine and of many. Um, he is the president of the Council of Bishops. And so he has written a letter on behalf of the council on the Supreme Court's recent decision. I'm gonna encourage you to read both of those documents. Won't take you long, but should be helpful. In this video, I'm gonna give a summary of the social principle on abortion and offer some interpretive commentary that I hope will be helpful to you, okay? All right, the social principle on abortion from the United Methodist Book of Discipline. First thing I'll try to answer is where does this statement, this social principle come from? The United Methodist Church has a number of social principles that are based upon our uh, doctrine and discipline and polity and life of discipleship. We do have a statement uh, a social principle on the issue of abortion that has been present in the church since 1968 and has been worked on and revised, uh, changed um, ever since 1968. It's been worked on by theologians and ethicists, by medical professionals and activists and interest groups, by normal men and women within the church. Ultimately, the statement that we have today has come from um, the church's uh, chief legislative body, the General Conference. The General Conference is the United Methodist Church's worldwide legislative body. Okay, that's where it comes from. And this statement with all of the social principles um, are on the docket to be significantly revised at the 2024 gathering of the General Conference. 
Something that I appreciate about the current statement, the current social principle, is that whether you agree with it or not, it attempts to be caring and it attempts to avoid rhetorically demeaning or violent language that is unfortunately pretty common in discussions around abortion and statements uh, made by even church groups um, on abortion. There's some humility in it, and I appreciate that. Here are some of the major points in the social principle on abortion. One, it holds that both the life of the unborn and the pregnant woman are of sacred worth and their well-being is very important. Two, it states that the United Methodist Church does not endorse the medical procedure of abortion as a regular means of birth control or gender selection. Three, it acknowledges the reality and the pain of unwelcomed pregnancy and that the pain of unwelcome pregnancy falls more heavily upon the poor and the marginalized in the U.S. Four, it states that there are times when, tragically, the life of the unborn and the life of the mother are in conflict. As a pastor, I know of plenty of folks who have endured the pain of that conflict. Because the statement recognizes that tragic conflict at times, it says that abortion should be safe and legal. Five. It states that the church will be a prayerful and actively helpful presence for those who face an unwelcomed pregnancy, for those who support them, and those who enter into motherhood without the support that they need. The church will be an active and helpful presence for those persons. Six, lastly, the social principle on abortion states that laws and regulations do not provide all that is needed for one who is in a crisis pregnancy or experiencing an unwelcomed pregnancy. These persons are going to need family. They're going to need medical professionals and their expertise and knowledge. They're going to need pastoral and other kinds of support and counsel. All of that is needed. Some folks have said that this social principle on abortion from the United Methodist Church um, teaches that abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. I think that's an accurate summary. A side note, we know that the availability of contraception, of sex education, and the social supports that address the financial and life stresses brought on by parenthood make abortion rarer. Safe, legal, rare. That's also how I interpret the letter from Bishop Bickerton and the Council of Bishop. Again, I invite you to read that letter um, provided for you in the link. For those of you who are listening to me and you have had an abortion, my goodness, 
this has to be a painful time for you. The debate, um, the news coverage, all of that. I feel for you. I love you and today I include you in my prayers and I want to be the kind of pastor who offers a non-judgmental listening ear and if you need that or want that I'll be here for you and others will be here for you as well. For those of you who believe that the social principle as, as it's read today that it's inadequate well, any member of the United Methodist Church can submit recommended changes to any social principle. Ask me, and I'll tell you how you could do that. Can't guarantee that the voting delegates to General Conference would approve, but your voice would be heard. Just ask me. Must one agree with the United Methodist social principle on abortion in order to be a member or active in a United Methodist congregation. No, you don't have to agree with our social principle on abortion or another social principle that you find. I'm not sure I agree with all of them. So no, you don't have to agree to be a part of a congregation. To quote the founder of the Methodist movement, the Reverend John Wesley from back in the 1700s, he said, though we cannot think alike, may we not love alike? May we not be of one heart, though we are not of the same opinion? Without doubt we may. In this, all the children of God may unite. They may help one another increase in love and in good works. That comes from Wesley's sermon called uh, A Catholic Spirit. It's difficult to know what kind of abortion legislation is going to prevail in West Virginia or Pennsylvania where Suncrest has, has church members. But I imagine that in the coming days, the ministry of Burlington United Methodist Family Services, which has offices all over West Virginia and Garrett County, Maryland, I imagine that um, that ministry is going to be even, continue to be even more important um, in the coming days. Burlington offers foster care and adoption services. It offers residential care for children and youth who can't be with their families or their parent. Um, it offers parenting support programs like right from the start. And you're gonna find a link to Burlington's website also in the bit.ly document that's being shared with you. This coming Sunday, when we come together to worship the Lord of all the nations. Um, the founding of the United States is gonna be at the forefront um, in our thinking for, for many of us. When we celebrate communion and come to the Lord's table, you're gonna be invited to stop at the prayer rail and to pick up a US flag, a small one, and to say a prayer for the United States. Perhaps you'll be led to pray for a particular group or leader um, or situation. You'll be invited to pray for our country and perhaps even for your participation in this amazing democracy. Maybe even pray over your response to abortion. Thanks for spending some time with me. God bless.